Welcome back, everybody, to another installment of the Verde Brand Communications Weekly Live Show, which missed a couple of weeks. My apologies. I've had some things going on that have required a lot of attention in this business, but we are going to really, really try to be on track for the show every Wednesday going forward. It's either going to be at 11 or 2. Keep your eyes on our social media and you will know what the deal is there. Um, I'm hoping that you can see me because I have no idea if, it, if what I'm doing is working. I do have somebody who's supposed to text me, but in the interest of making sure I'm making the most of your time today, I'm just going to drop right in to today's show. And it's kind of a cool show. We have three things we're going to be hitting on as we always do. One is about the consumer, one is about the media, and one is about retail. So those are the those are the kind of the sides of the triangle, the legs of the stool, whatever you want to say. The, th the top three things. So we're going to start with a helpful reminder on today's wily consumer, otherwise known as the wet bar of soap. <laughs> very, very hard to hold on to <laughs> or know where they're going to land and what's going to happen after they land, right? So... Um, I would say even looking at the analogy of herding cats, when it comes to like a broader perception of consumer uh, behavior change, herding cats doesn't even begin to describe what it's like to get capture and gather all of the changes that we continue to see with the consumer today. But when you put the lens of like specialty, specialty brand, specialty retailer on that, it becomes a little bit more manageable. And that's always what we aim to do here at Verde, at Channel Mastery, and at the Multi-Channel Marketing Academy. Those are our three things. I like things that are in threes, apparently. So in specialty, as we propagate across all of our content here at Verde and Channel Mastery, we have to understand and anticipate our absolute target shopper or consumer. Once we have an idea of who that is and we're studying them and really embedding with them and literally keeping a pulse on them week in and week out, that's when we can actually pin a tail on any kind of proverbial donkey here, okay? So that consumer is definitely the North Star. And if we can rely on anything at all, it is getting to know and anticipating our target shopper or avatar. Or consumer. So I wanted to start by talking about a, a book called Creating Passion Brands by author Helen Edwards. And I will have the links in the caption here, or I guess we're not on YouTube today, we're on Facebook. So I'll put it there. Um, she's the director of Passion Brand Branding Agency and a columnist at Marketing Week. And I think that she really speaks our specialty language. She made a presentation recently at a festival of marketing, which I'm sure was virtual. And uh, her focus was on the nuances of the consumer or human behavior. And this is already probably pretty out of date. <laughs> but again, we're focusing on our absolute target shopper or consumer. And that means we'll never be off the back because we have their pulse. So... Basically, what I loved about this is it's a little bit of a sleight of mouth approach, meaning she's trying to really put a belief into the ground, a belief that we've all maybe subscribed to at some point that just is not relevant anymore. And I definitely agree with her. She's pushing back against marketing science and behavioral science. Those indicate some kind of a concrete, verifiable solution, right? So instead, she's encouraging us as marketers to pay more attention to the subtle signs consumers are giving us. And as I said, that goes right back to embedding with your target shopper or avatar or consumer. Let's just say consumer because it's easier. Embed with them. Look at how they're responding to and sharing your content. Audit your social media channels. Study them at every opportunity across every channel that's giving you real-time feedback through data. That is how you understand the pulse of your consumer. That's what you go off of. You don't go off marketing science. Broad strokes, anything, institutionalized anything is not as helpful as it was pre-COVID. So we have to basically hand build this relationship and take the pulse of our consumer and understand where they're going to go and really not even be surprised by their reaction to what we're doing because we know them so well. So the consumers in the driver's seat, obviously get tethered to your target shopper to the point where you have their pulse and you feel and expect their reactions. So according to Edwards, 
She says, and I quote, it's time for us to stop and drop the arrogance of trying to nudge people and rather be more alert and responsive to consumers who are nudging us. Again, stay on it with understanding their pulse. And so what she basically means is, basically she says, if a call drops off in a queue, that's a nudge to improve response time. When a consumer picks up a sweater, feels it and puts it back down again, it's a nudge to improve product quality. When a consumer hides the bag that they got something from, from your store, it's a nudge about your packaging or even the meaning of your brand. And if you're anything like me, it sounds like pretty standard advice, but take a moment to reflect on the type of reports you're writing, the success metrics you expect your team to deliver and how you're working to shape your email funnels and your consumer shopping journey. But I really have to say, if you're a marketing leader listening to this today, what this really is, is an opportunity to create a dashboard that ties together the data that shows real-time feedback from how your consumer is engaging with and sharing your content or not, and bringing that to your leadership team peers, because you own the consumer relationship as the marketing leader of your specialty brand. Just saying. So what Edwards writes supports all of that. And we are really, I think, as Channel Mastery listeners, <laughs> right there, ready to receive this information. It is not new for us. But it's nice to see that somebody is supporting that on a broader level from consumer packaged goods level. We're so ahead in specialty. I just love it. All right. So number two, I wanted to talk about what I'm calling a new specialty media conglomerate. And I would say there's a couple of these emerging. Um, but last week, Powder Snowboarder, Bike, and Surfer magazines went out of business, okay? Um, I'm sure that we'll see them again in some form. Um, I used to contribute to Bike and Snowboarder magazine back when I was a freelance journalist way back in the day. It was very sad to see this. Everybody had a collective sigh of relief, but we also heard through our network at Verde, these entities were having a difficult time evolving beyond the advertising supported revenue, right? Um, the longer a title seems to have embedded itself in that revenue, the tougher it is to change. We can say this about our own businesses, no matter what size we are, if we're not on our game and just continuing to play a very nimble business role in our strategy, right? So keep in mind that being nimble and staying in the framework of pivoting, you just got a master's degree in that in your business. Keep that going as we finish out 2020 and plan for 2021. Contingency plans, contingency budgets, nimble. That's where we want to be. These publications did not survive what's happening now. And we also, and I'm not sure this has to do with like financial solubility or not, but Jim Clymer, Rock and Ice, Trail Runner magazines were all sold to Pocket Outdoor Media. And um, I congratulate the owners of Big Stone Media, Big Stone Publishing, who owned those titles. They did a fantastic job over the years. And I'm really excited to see what Pocket Outdoor Media will bring in terms of a new life for these titles. Um, and just today, the 21st of October, Bonnie Air Corp announced that Popular Science Field and Stream and Outdoor Life were sold to North Equity, a private equity firm that's been snapping up media titles. So there's Pocket Outdoor Media and apparently North Equity, um, who are really seeing an opportunity with specialty media titles right now. Pocket Outdoor Media went on this buying spree earlier this year. Um, bicycle Retailer and Industry News, Snooze, A Media. I believe there were 20 titles under A Media that um, Robin Thurston, who is the owner of Pocket Outdoor Media, purchased. Um, very uh, Warren Miller Entertainment, Backpacker Magazine, Yoga Journal, Climbing. So now Rock and Ice and Climbing are owned by the same publishing company, which is interesting. So why on earth is this happening? So Robin Thurston, the CEO of Pocket Outdoor Media, has a multi-channel plan. There's an opportunity, he says, to let these brands flourish under a new model that combines advertising, digital subscription, e-commerce, and events. So we've seen Wirecutter. We've seen uh, publications that have events for some time. Um, we're seeing GCN, which is Global Cycling Network, which has combined advertising, digital subscription, e-commerce, 
and events. Um, they're a stalwart example of this model working in the consumer realm. Now we're seeing consumer and trade under pocket outdoor media and specialty. And I'm super curious to see how this goes. E-commerce and events living side by side, subscription and advertising. The old vertical or endemic magazine model was built exclusively almost I would say exclusively on advertising as the main channel of revenue. There was a church and state between advertising and uh, editorial that obviously has been blurring for some time, but what remains the same is the power and the value in the reach of the audience. So the more um, expansive the audience is, the more brands are going to be open to reaching that audience through cross promotion and purchasing ways to cross promote with that title to reach that audience. And ultimately pocket outdoor media is developing a different model for that. And I'm super excited to see a, how they create efficiencies, how they plan to scale this and how they plan to continue to grow their audience. It seems to me one of the most important ways or one of the most important factors that they need to consider at pocket outdoor media will be, ushering in an inclusive approach that brings in newcomers. And we have a ton of newcomers in outdoor active lifestyle through COVID and cycling. Um, but I'm curious to see how they're going to position this new opportunity for experiential uh, content, advertising events, experiences, et cetera, to the newcomers, as well as the enthusiasts. Because over the years, the enthusiasts in specialty, especially among our you know, sports and outdoor have become quite snooty and they definitely like to have the editorial tailored to them in a certain way. And I'm curious to see how efficiencies and scale are built around that. I know that there are such innovative ways to do this through technology and the group is very creative over at Pocket Outdoor Media. I can't wait to see what they do. And I definitely have a lot of votes of confidence and support going over to CEO Robin Thurston and his team's way because I just applaud you and thank you for buying these stalwart, incredible publications, building community, communities around them, growing those audiences and creating opportunities for us to reach and engage those audiences. So best of luck. I can't wait to see this multi-channel strategy continue to emerge and grow. And I'm sure it will continue to change because you have to remain nimble, and excited to pivot, right? Okay. I don't want to start a drinking game where you drink every time I say pivot or nimble, please. All right. So last topic on my list is a short one today is Prime Day. So we saw Prime Day happen October 13th and 14th. Um, I believe it was Amazon's first ever October Prime Day. And what it really signaled was welcome to holiday 2020. We've been talking about this a lot on the podcast and on the Verity Lives and in our community in the Academy and cohort too. Um, Holiday definitely kicked off after Labor Day this year from an email marketing standpoint and promotion standpoint. Um, and if you're a specialty brand or retailer, you may or may not be ready for holiday in terms of like full on, it's October, but it's here. So we have to deal. Um, and I've been seeing a couple of things I wanted to point out. The consumers are feeling the limiter and the time sensitivity around whatever's going to happen with shipping product this year. Okay. I just was on backcountry.com's newsletter this morning that I received. And it said at the bottom, keep in mind, the U.S. Postal Service, et cetera, et cetera, are anticipating delays in shipments this year. So get on it, basically, right? So consumers are getting that. Um, the U.S. Postal Service is not only expecting delayed shipping times in Q4, they are also implementing a holiday shipping surcharge from October 18th through December 27th, 2020. So for anybody who ships as part of your business, probably you, be sure you're communicating clearly with your consumers around timing, arrival guarantees, and added fees if they apply. Trust me, this will be a very important thing to create a good relationship and an ongoing nurturing relationship with your consumer. They will definitely appreciate this heads up and they will like to be prompted to shop early, but don't make it sound like you're like forcing them to or hanging a fear-based tactic over their head. Educate them instead and advise them, hey, this is out there. Here is what we're doing to make this easier for you is definitely the way you want to approach that. And away we go. Happy holidays. Way more coming on this one next week. Um, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. And keep in mind, all of the articles will be in, I guess, 
Facebook or at the channelmastery.com website or at Verde PR's blog. You can find them in those three places. And I really look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. You will see me, I promise, um, for next week's Verde Live. All right. Take care, everybody.